First at four, a taste of sunshine to end the week, but there is potential trouble ahead. We have your weekend forecast. Paula. Hey, Karen, it would not be a beautiful fall Friday without the goats. We're back with the goats of City Girl Farms. They've just booked a huge gig, <laughs> and we're going to tell you all about it. Also, military justice under fire today. What President Trump is saying about the sentence for Bo Bergdahl. A first, high school hazing. There's breaking news out of Wayne County this afternoon after some very disturbing claims at a local high school. Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew. Let's start with that breaking news. Charges today against three teenagers, all students at Fortson High School in Dearborn. The three sophomores have been charged with assault and battery. Now, we started hearing about this incident about a month ago with claims of severe hazing in the school locker room. Now, Wayne County prosecutors say the three suspects assaulted a 13-year-old freshman before his football practice. They say one of the boys even exposed himself to that freshman. The suspects face a pretrial hearing later this month. Also first at four, this is one of the most memorable police chases we've ever seen in Metro Detroit. Remember this guy jumping on top of a minivan in the middle of traffic? Well, today he's been sentenced for that wild chase. 22-year-old Darren Sherrard was charged with fleeing, resisting arrest, and three counts of possession of a controlled substance. He pled guilty to all charges and will now serve 90 days in jail. Sherrard addressed the courtroom right before being sentenced. I would like to say I apologize to the officers and my family for uh, putting myself in danger and putting them in danger. Sherrard remains a murder suspect in a deadly shooting that happened in southwest Detroit, but charges have not been announced in that case. This fiery crash may have affected your morning commute. Eastbound I-96 near Fullerton Avenue in Detroit was backed up for hours after a driver hit a Michigan State Police Trooper's car, causing it to catch fire. The officer was outside of his patrol vehicle at the time of the incident. Police say the driver is at fault, but found they were not under the influence of alcohol. Fortunately, no one was injured. On the city's west side, police say they have uncovered a suspected grow operation. This is on Finkel Avenue near Myers Road. Police were originally called to the scene after a report of breaking and entering. Once there, they say they discovered what they believe is a massive drug operation. Here you can see a hole in the side of the building and several plants being removed. Right now, it's unknown how many plants were confiscated or if any arrests have been made. It's beginning to feel a lot like Thanksgiving here in Detroit. This morning it was the Pancakes and Parade Floats. You may have seen our coverage of the 18th Annual Parade Pancake Breakfast, sponsored by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan. The breakfast brings community members together and starts that final countdown to the parade, which is just 20 days away. We'll show you a special float that was unveiled today on Local 4 News at 5. As we are headed into the weekend, you're going to have to watch out for rain. So let's get the very first look from Andrew Humphrey, who's in for Ben. Hi, Andrew. Hey there, Karen. You're exactly right. So soak up these rays of sunshine while you can for the rest of the afternoon. Feeling good out there. I mean, a beautiful fall afternoon with partly to mostly sunny skies. Nice and crisp out there as well. You'll need your jackets. It's a chilly 45 degrees in Sandusky, while it's 50 degrees over at City Airport, 51 for our friends over at Metro. As you can see to our west, we've got cloudier skies, some snow over in Minneapolis. We don't need to worry about snow over the weekend, but rain shower is a possibility as we go from Saturday into Sunday. Let's focus on some great news once again. Beautiful Christmas tree going up and downtown Detroit. Beautiful fall colors still out there with temperatures in all four of our zones in the 40s and 50s. 50 degrees for our friends in Ann Arbor and a gentle wind out of the north. I know you're thinking about basketball tonight. Yeah, Coach Van Gusty. We know, uh, uh, Van Gundy. I know you're watching. Gusty, that's like winds. We'll see uh, the Pistons uh, in town later tonight at 7 o'clock. Temperatures go from 50s to 40s, so pick out your favorite Pistons jacket before going to the game at LCA. More on that weekend rain coming up, Karen. All right, thank you, Andrew. The White House was briefly on lockdown today, and one man is now facing charges. It all happened just 19 minutes after President Trump left the White House. A 33-year-old man told police he, quote, dropped explosives in the area. The White House was locked down, and nearby streets were closed. Agents swept the area.
Didn't find any explosives, but the man is charged with one count of felony threats. Meantime, President Donald Trump is heading to Asia for the biggest trip of his presidency. But before turning his attention to North Korea, he took a parting shot at Hillary Clinton and the Democratic Party. Devin Scullions in the newsroom tracking several White House storylines on this Friday afternoon. Uh, quite a few indeed, Karen. A part of being president means that your plate is always full. Just this week, President Trump pushing tax reform, uh, dealing, of course, with the Russia investigation, and now heading on this very lengthy trip to Asia. The president's trip will focus on trade with China and America's standoff with North Korea over nuclear weapons. But as he heads abroad, he is still very much bothered by that Russia investigation, especially the guilty plea of George Papadopoulos. A campaign volunteer who admitted to lying to the FBI and court documents show he did pitch a meeting between presidential candidate Trump and Vladimir Putin, an idea that was rejected. Today, the president trying to distance himself from Papadopoulos and deflect attention to the new democratic disarray. All I can tell you is this. There was no collusion. There was no nothing. It's a disgrace, frankly, that they continue. You want to look at Hillary Clinton and you want to look at the new book that was just put out by Donna Brazil, where she basically bought the DNC and she stole the election from Bernie. So that's what you ought to take a look at. He's referring to an explosive new book out from, as he mentioned, Democratic operative Donna Brazil. She says Hillary Clinton had too much control over the Democratic Party's finances before she actually won the nomination, which she believes tipped the scales against Bernie Sanders. The president would love everyone to be talking about that, of course, instead of what's been going on with the Russia investigation. Uh, We'll be talking about this on both sides for some time, no doubt. Uh, but again, a 12-day trip starting today, Karen. Back to you. All right. Thank you very much, Devin. We appreciate that. Meantime, the president's daughter and advisor, Ivanka Trump, is already overseas. She had dinner with Japan's prime minister today ahead of her father's arrival. Earlier, she attended the annual World Assembly for Women in Tokyo, where she gave speeches on women's empowerment and gender equality. President Trump arrives in Japan on Sunday. Here at home, goats are going to work once again. If you're a regular first to four viewer, you know how goats can be used to attack stubborn invasive plants. Well, that idea is really catching on. Apollo Tupman has learned a major city will deploy goats to do some cleanup, and she joins us from Pontiac. Hey there, Paula. Hey, Karen. And so, of course, these are our very, very important workers. This is a story we've been very interested in for a while because while it is popular in other countries, it's just coming to our area and they're able to clean up brush. They don't have to use pesticides or poisons, none of those ozone busting, dangerous gas emissions. Well, at least this might be a different kind of methane. But the important thing is that a major municipality now sees the value in goatscaping. It's more than an eyesore, it's a safety hazard and an impediment to progress. This section of Rotary Park off Orchard Lake Road in Pontiac has been the victim of decay and neglect for years. But we're trying to open up the sight lines um, so it can't be a place for criminal activity. But not for long. They're back. Those cloven hoofed horn-eating machines that make up the army of City Girl Farms goats. No sooner were they unloaded, their sheer, unbridled eating ability was unleashed. They've been booking steady gigs since we met them earlier this summer with their goatscaping projects. I mean, we've cleared Phragmites out in Auburn Hills. We did a job in Birmingham for two weeks where they ate um, about an acre of poison ivy. Um, and then we just finished out in Lake Angeles where it was a bluff that uh, landscape companies wouldn't put their employees on because it was too steep. And this weekend, they have their first major municipal contract this is important because it means people are starting to get goat power. So this area, which is all the way to Orchard Lake Road, and this is really kind of the western gateway to Pontiac. So it's a beautiful view of West and Tennis Center, mm -hmm. and really um, it's just on the edge of Pontiac, and we want it to be a warm and welcoming view as you come into Pontiac. Amy McIntyre of City Girl Farms is building the fence enclosures that will be corralling these goats while they work for the next five days. They're going to basically eat through this section to open it up so you can see through it. But we're hoping to put a pavilion on it, some walking trails, an arboretum, really make it for the community.
Oh, stop. Are you eating me? Stop. Okay. Okay, so listen, here's the thing. The goats are going to be on uh, uh, at the Rotary Park. I'm sorry, this goat was freaking me out just a little bit, but I'm okay now. So the goats will be at Rotary Park at noon tomorrow. They'll be there for five days. The public is welcome to come out to actually watch the goats work. So we're talking about Rotary Park, which is really closer to Orchard Lake um, in Pontiac. And you'll be able to actually watch these goats work for the next five days clearing that brush. Uh, Karen, <laughs> I know. You know what? I'm a farm girl, and I'm still not used to goats. I mean, I think it's an important story. I'll be honest with you. It's an important story, but they still just kind of freak me out a little. But I like them when they're behind that fence. I know. Well, it is live television, so for, for the fact that it is live, I'm going to ask you a question and get you a little more tense. You said okay. it's going to go on for five days, so that means they're going to clear that whole area in five days, Paula? They are. And Karen, and here's the thing. That particular job costs about $1,000 It's for five days of work. I want you to think about what it would cost to get five men in there clearing that area even for just a day. It's very economical and it is completely natural, though a little kind of freakish. Well, yes, I think it's a great it is, idea. Yes. Paula, we appreciate it. Hmm? We'll let you go hang out with your friends over in Pontiac. Still ahead on First at Four. A salute to smart women is really paying off for one toy company. That is one of our trending stories today. Also, a swarm of bees finds an unusual place to set up a new home. But at first, he abandoned his military post and was taken hostage by the Taliban. President Trump said he deserves a tougher punishment. But what did the judge say? Ordinary. First and Four continues with the surprising twist in the desertion case surrounding Bo Bergdahl. He walked into court today not knowing if he would spend the rest of his life in prison. But a military judge ruled Bergdahl would not serve any prison time. Instead, he received a dishonorable discharge. His rank was bumped down to private and he will pay $10,000. Bergdahl walked away from his post in Afghanistan, putting fellow officers in jeopardy. Some were seriously injured. Bergdahl was held prisoner by the Taliban for five years. President Trump tweeted today, calling the sentence a disgrace to our country and our military. First of four, we're also on top of stories making headlines all around the world. Let's start in Italy, where authorities say they've put a dent in ISIS financing with a major opiate bust. You can see the cargo container where Italian financial police seized about 24 million painkiller tablets that were bound for Libya. This comes six months after authorities stopped a shipment of 37 million tablets. Experts believe ISIS gives drugs to its fighters and sells them to finance terror operations. Moving to Australia, an unusual sight stopped Sydney lunchgoers in their tracks. You can see the crowd surrounding a swarm of bees that tried to make a motorcycle its new home. An urban beekeeper had to be called in to remove the swarm. Luckily for the owner of the bike, the queen bee was removed before the colony was able to settle into their new home. That would be quite a sight. Uh, beekeepers are everywhere. Exactly. <laughs> uh, Andrew is here. Kind of a strange day. It started out, yeah. it seemed so chilly, and then bam, that sun came out this afternoon, and it's gorgeous. I know. Beautiful autumn afternoon, yeah. Karen, and it still continues as we go into this evening for all your evening plans, and overnight tonight it remains dry. But it does get chillier, ladies and gentlemen. So let's take a look at your four-zone weather, shall we? Here's your forecast with overnight lows. Now, it remains dry overnight, but you make sure those heaters are working because we'll get down to the chilly or cold 30s, down to 34 to 30. 36 degrees in Troy, around 36 to 38 degrees for our friends over in uh, Warren, and right here in downtown Detroit, around 40 degrees or slightly less. In our south zone, same deal. Tecumseh down to around 36, 37 degrees. West of 275 in our west zone, sure staying above freezing, but you'll still need those jackets and coats by morning if you're going to services or morning activities. Low temperatures down to about 35 in Livingston County. Middle and low 30s also in our north zone. Out there, there's that gorgeous sunshine that Karen was talking about. 51 currently with a nice breeze out of the north at around 10 miles per hour. Still great weather this evening, whether you're going out, uh, coming downtown Detroit to see some basketball or taking a movie or a show. Take a look at your forecast for football. Penn State visiting Michigan State. That's right. This is in East Lansing tomorrow afternoon. Kickoff is at 12 noon. Tailgaters, you will need your jackets. Temperatures start in the 30s and 40s over in East Lansing. And during the game, sure, it gets a little milder, more seasonable, 52 degrees. But there is a chance of showers developing by the end of the game. So bring your ponchos as well. In fact, for the evening game, this is Minnesota versus Michigan for the Little Brown Jug. It's going to be wet over in Ann Arbor as well. 
Light to moderate showers move into Ann Arbor just before 5 o'clock. We're looking at kickoff at 730. It looks like it's going to be wet during much of the game with winds out of the east and temperatures going from 50s into 40s. So rather raw conditions over in Ann Arbor for, van, for fans and players alike. Outside right now, we're looking at 40s and 50s out there, around 50 degrees right in the middle for our friends over in Ferndale. But high pressure remains in control. That's great news for the rest of this afternoon, this evening, and tonight. High pressure, sinking air, so it means more stable air. It means dry conditions, basically. But an area of low pressure is building to our west along with a warm front. That warm front is going to bring some higher temperatures by Sunday, especially. But it also brings cloudier skies overnight. And that chance of showers rolling in between 3 and 5 in the afternoon from Chicago, from Indiana, right over southeast Michigan. And a trailing cold front will bring some stormy weather on Sunday. In fact, there's a slight risk of strong to severe storms on Sunday. No guarantee, but keep it tuned right here to Local 4. Also, the Local Forecasters app so you can track any shower or thunderstorm activity on both Saturday and Sunday. Overnight lows down to 37, 53 tomorrow with sunshine in the morning, but showers in the afternoon, rainy, even stormy on Sunday. But look at this, Karen. Next week, it gets sunnier. When we go out to vote on Tuesday, it will be chillier. Grab your jackets. Highs in the 40s. Back over to you. All right, thank you, Andrew. Still ahead, talk about a clumsy entrance. A burglar caught on camera as he breaks into a store. And let's just say it had to hurt. We'll show you next. Also, it took more than 20 years for Hershey to unveil this new candy bar. So take a close look. Can you tell what's missing? Trending stories next. Exposure. All right, take a look at this surveillance video from Baltimore. That's a thief right there tumbling mm. into a convenience store. Not a pretty graceful entrance. Casey blinked. Here it is again. And there he falls. Well, after he picks himself up, he stuffs packs of cigarettes into his shirt. Then he climbs back up through the ceiling to make his getaway. Believe it or not, Baltimore police are still looking for this guy. In today's trending stories, many fans are sending their thoughts to Jimmy Fallon today. NBC has canceled today's taping of The Tonight Show as the host deals with a private family matter. One source says Fallon's mother is ill and in the hospital. Right now, no changes have been made to next week's schedule. Tonight, you'll see a rerun from September. Who knew Legos could strike such a big blow for gender equality? The Women of NASA playset is now the best-selling toy on Amazon. It just went on sale on Wednesday. At one point, Amazon was sold out. The figures are part of the company's push to be more inclusive of women. The set honors four smart women who played vital roles in the space program. Astronauts Sally Ride and Mae Jemison astronomer Nancy Grace Roman and computer scientist Margaret Hamilton. The set of 231 plastic pieces sells for $25. Take a look at this Hershey's Gold. You're looking at a candy bar that's really making history. Only three candy bars have carried the Hershey's name. Now add Hershey's Gold to the list. It is a caramelized cream bar with pretzels and peanuts baked inside. And as you can probably tell, it is the first Hershey's bar that does not contain chocolate. Here's some candy bar trivia for you. The original Hershey bar made its debut in 1900. The special dark chocolate arrived in 1939. Hershey waited until 1995 to introduce cookies and cream. Let's hope we don't have to wait another 20 years for a new treat. That cookies and cream is delicious. Still had a cheerleading team that's lifting spirits for entire families. Also, I'm working on a really inspiring story for tonight at 11. Take a look. Here, let me have one of those. He's a seventh grader intent on helping those in need. Hello, sir. I saw you had no shoes on. He's handed out more than 50,000 pairs of socks. It was very, very impressive for a young man. This 12-year-old is on the speaking circuit. Pay it forward. And we're with him when he hits the streets of Detroit to help those who need it most. I saw the need and I acted on it. The story on Rudy the Sock Man, tonight at 11. Finally, first at four, a youth cheerleading team is breaking barriers, also melting hearts. Karen, you're absolutely right. That's because this team out of Webster, Massachusetts, has welcomed children who are living with various challenges, such as Down syndrome and autism. The coach has adapted her training methods to help all the children feel comfortable. Parents are really seeing the results. The first day they did the entire routine, I think 
every single one of us cry. When they cheer and they clap for him, he just, you see him you get this wave of energy and he just wants to do it more. What a great program. Oh my goodness, it looks like everybody wins on this team. Yeah, building confidence and self-esteem. Love it. Well, thank you so much for spending part of your afternoon with us. Inside Edition's next.